This episode is brought to you by Marvel Studios Echo. All episodes streaming January 9th, only on Hulu and Disney+. Plus. Rated TVMALV. Viewer discretion advised. Maya Lopez has betrayed her mentor, the notorious Kingpin. Now on the run, she returns to her hometown to prepare for the biggest fight of her life. Don't miss Marvel Studios' hardest-hitting series yet. An epic five-episode event. Marvel Studios Echo. All episodes streaming January 9th, only on Hulu and Disney+. Plus. Welcome to Scare You to Sleep. I'm your host, Shelby Scott, and I'm here to read you a chilling bedtime story. First and foremost, I wanted to say happy belated birthday to Spencer from me and your boyfriend Andre, who reached out to me and I just so happened to see his Instagram DM just in time. So happy birthday, Spencer. I hope you had a good one. I'm so excited for our story this week, and when I thought I knew where this was going, boy was I wrong. This story is by a new author to the show, Serena Nix. Here is Devil of the Dark. Any other day, I may have called to let them know I was running behind. But today, it slipped my mind in my state of exhaustion. I don't remember sleeping all that bad, but my body was begging for rest. I could feel the sleep in my eyes and taste it in my mouth. I pulled into the parking lot a little too quickly, jerking forward as I hit the brakes to park. I caught a glimpse of myself for the first time this morning, in the rearview mirror, and I looked as tired as I felt. I ran my fingers through my hair, trying to tame the bedhead. I hoped my dark waves would come across as rugged and natural, but I knew they just looked disheveled and lazy. I always considered myself a pretty average-looking guy. But I'd be lying if I said I wasn't blessed with a jawline that could distract from my other sleep-deprived features. Big blue letters on the front of the building read, Narrows Accounting Group. Off to another fun-filled day of managing other people's money and preparing financial records. Our office secretary was sitting at the front desk once you enter the building. Megan. I liked her. She was a sweet girl, in her early 20s. Blonde hair, blue eyes. I'm sure the frat boys where she went to college were falling all over themselves trying to get closer to her. She was great at her job, and we got along well. It probably helped that I was maybe the only guy in the office who wasn't interested in getting into her pants. I preferred brunettes. I was already running late, so... I didn't have time for any conversation this morning. Morning, Meg, I say without slowing down. I almost feel bad for not taking the time to stop and chat. She looks kind of sad today. She didn't even look up from her lap. I get to my office and sit down. It's 10 after 8. My first client of the day should be here in 5 minutes. I open my desktop to familiarize myself with my client's files before he gets here. I don't have as much time as I'd like, so I have to make it quick. I shake the mouse around and my computer comes to life with a couple sing-songy notes. I press enter after typing the same password I've typed in five days a week for 12 years, and my computer doesn't open. Instead, the typed portion shakes a bit telling me I've misspelled something. So I enter it again. Nothing. Slower this time. Nothing. I try that finger poke technique we all used when we first started typing. When only your index fingers touch a key. This wasn't user error. What the hell? I say to myself. No. 
there's no way I'll be able to prep for my meeting. <sighs> I've got to tell Meg what's going on. Maybe I'm not the only one having issues this morning, I think to myself. I get up and head back to the front desk. Meg's head is still tilted down, and she's staring at her hands in her lap. Hey Meg, what's up with the computers this morning? It's not recognizing my password. Am I the only one? Silence. Wow, she is distracted today. Her eyes are red and puffy. I can tell she's been crying. She still didn't look up from her lap. Hello? Are you good? Can you get a message off to IT for me, please? I ask. I'm not trying to be a dick. She's obviously got something going on. But she's acting like she can't even hear me. I knock on her desk, right in front of her. And nothing. She's as unresponsive as the computer in my office. Just as I'm about to speak again, I hear a somber voice approaching from behind. Hey, Meg. I know you guys were close. Let me know if there's anything I can do for you. We're all just... trying our best to get through the day. This got her attention. She looked up and right into Dale's eyes. Thank you, Dale. I'm... I'm trying to keep it together up here. I could see now why Meg was so upset. She had lost someone. By the sounds of it, someone we all knew. I must have missed the news by rushing into my office this morning and missing out on the normal morning chit-chat. Shit, Meg, I'm sorry. I didn't realize there was something going on. What happened? Are you okay? I ask her. Still nothing. An odd sensation runs through me. Not overwhelming, I just suddenly feel... off. I don't know what I did for Meg to completely ignore me. She responded to Dale immediately, and Dale was sort of an ass. Certainly less liked around the office than myself. He was about to turn the corner into his own office. Maybe he could tell me what was up with my computer and Meg. I took a couple jogging steps to close the gap between us. Hey, Dale, what's going on around here this morning? I asked him. Dale wasn't phased by my question. He acted as if he didn't hear it. Like, he didn't know I was even there. Didn't slow down, didn't turn around, didn't miss a step. Irritated and confused, I reached out to grab him by the shoulder and turn him around. And just then, my entire world fell apart. My hand, it went right through his shoulder. I reached out to grab him harder this time. Instead of a handful of his tacky polyester blazer, a sort of foggy aura followed my hand in a downward motion and moved right through him. He didn't even notice. I felt a tightness take over my chest and throat. A cold sweat sent a wave through my body and I felt like I might vomit. Panic began to set in as my mind tried to make sense of anything that just happened. I looked back at Meg and she was still sitting at her desk. Just looking at her lap. Like the sight of me putting my fucking hand through Dale didn't phase her at all. Meg, what the fuck is happening? What's wrong with Dale? Look at me! I screamed at her this time as I whipped around in a frenzy. I couldn't tell if it was out of anger or frustration or panic. She didn't flinch. There's no way, I thought. This can't be real. I reached out slowly because I knew what would happen next. I brushed my hand on Meg's face. That same foggy aura followed my hand through her. I 
waved my hand around wildly now, feeling any sense of rationality leave my soul. It was all a blur. A blur that was apparently unnoticeable to Meg. Or Dale. I was standing in the middle of the main floor directly in front of the front desk. I put my hands up to my own head and balled my fists in my hair. Trying to take deep breaths, I threw my hands down and yelled, This can't be real! This is a dream, right? Can any of you hear me? I would have been happy to get an answer from anyone. Instead, I was met with silence. The only sounds I could hear were Meg's fingers on her keyboard and her occasional sniffle. The room around me was so still and eerie in comparison to the kaleidoscope of fear that was building inside of me. When you are faced with something so unreal that it makes you question time and space itself, you won't have any idea what to do. Your rational mind will be so far away that your body will almost forget how to breathe, how to keep your heart beating, how to blink. In that moment, as I was willing myself to breathe, my mind went to the one place it could make any sense of. Olivia. I ran back to my office, grabbed my keys, and nearly threw myself into my car. I needed to see her. I needed to touch her. Not reach through her, but feel her soft skin in my hand. I don't know what was moving faster. My mind or my car. I sped home as quickly as I possibly could, the whole time with my heart pounding in my throat. My tires screeched as I slammed the brakes in the driveway. I didn't even close the door to my car before sprinting to the front door. Hands shaking, I turned the deadbolt, then the door handle. The house was still quiet, and my heart was sinking more and more by the second. I stood in the doorway for a minute. I wanted to run upstairs and throw myself into my room dramatically, falling into Olivia's arms and waking up from this nightmare. But the silence in the house was deafening, and the picture of my hand falling through Dale was replaying over and over in my head. I grabbed the railing to the stairs and slowly made my way up them. I reached the top and turned to the left to open the bedroom door. She was in bed still. She never slept in. I stood there and watched her chest rise and fall for a minute. I loved how her face was always a little pinker and puffy from the sleep in the morning. How her curly, dark hair was falling out of the bun she puts it in at night to keep it out of her face. I studied the bridge of her nose, the space between her lips, open just wide enough for her to inhale and exhale. Inhale, then exhale. She hated when she breathed through her mouth, when she slept on her back, but I loved it. I loved absolutely everything about her. I thought back to the first time we met. It was about two and a half years ago, and I wanted to be with her from the second I saw her. The first time I saw her electric smile. I wanted so badly to give her reasons to show it, dark hair and dark eyes. She was so radiant. I was afraid to approach her. So afraid, in fact. She made the first move. We met at a brewery on opening weekend. The building was small, probably a capacity of about 50 people, and it was packed well beyond capacity. 
Myself and a few friends were sitting around a table sharing a pitcher of some IPA I didn't care for, but I didn't want to complain, so I suffered in silence. The room was loud. So many different people having so many different conversations. Just a buzz of people sharing words about work, about families, and music, and sex. Everyone was standing around with sweaty glasses, straining to hear each other speak. And then she walked in. And there were only two of us. The rest of the room suddenly wasn't important to me. She carried herself with her shoulders back and her chin up like she knew exactly who she was and she wouldn't have it any other way. She and a couple of friends were walking down the ramp that led from the front door to the bar. I hadn't realized I was staring until she met my gaze. My face immediately flushed. Fuck, I thought to myself, how long have I been staring at her? I couldn't help but look up at her several more times through the night, and was pleasantly surprised to see her occasionally looking back. I mean, I'd keep an eye on me too. She probably thought I was a creep for staring. Her and her girlfriends didn't stay too long. Just a beer or two and they were on their way. I was mad at myself for missing the opportunity to buy her a beer. I figured she would be one of the girls that my buddies would give me shit about down the road. I'd watch her walk away, and the guys would call me a pussy for not saying anything to her, and they would be right. She had to pass behind me to get to the exit, and as she did, she ran her hand across my upper back and left a folded piece of paper in front of me. It was her number. We made eye contact, and that was the first of her electric smiles that I would be responsible for. Hey there, it's the new year. You've got mood boards and resolutions and work is back in full swing and you don't need any extra stress in your life. And Factor's ready-to-eat meal delivery takes the stress out of meal planning and sets you up for success in the new year. Skip the grocery stores, prep work, and cooking fatigue. Instead, get chef-crafted, dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door with over 35 meals to choose from per week, including options like keto, calorie smart, vegan plus veggie, and more. Plus over 55 weekly add-ons, you'll have a ton of nutritious and flavorful options to kickstart your resolutions. Forget frantic lunch preps and rush dinners. Factors 2-Minute Meals are your secret weapon in the new year. Fuel up fast with restaurant-quality meals, all delivered right to your door. Factor now offers loads of snack options like breakfast, smoothies, juices, snacks, and more to keep me going no matter what's on the schedule. Skip the overpriced takeout trap. Factor is cheaper and way more delicious than takeout. Get chef-crafted, restaurant-quality meals delivered right to your door. They are ready to heat and eat in just two minutes, which means more time for you. Need a special occasion meal? Gourmet Plus is the perfect solution if you're looking for fast, upscale options done easily. When things get hectic, Factor is flexible. Change up your order every week with plans from 4 to 18 meals per week. Or pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. Stress less over mealtimes in the new year. Factors no prep, no mess meals, free up time otherwise spent on shopping, cooking, and cleanup. No more wasting time in the kitchen. Not only does Factor offer fast, simple solutions when I'm too busy to cook, they also help me stay on top of my goals. With offerings like Protein Plus and Keto, I can stay on track. This is definitely going to come in handy for my New Year's goals. Factor has everything I need for a week of flavorful, nutritious eats. In addition to ready-to-eat meals, they have cold-pressed juices, smoothies, energy bites, extra protein, veggie sides, and more to keep me energized during frantic times. Head to factormeals.com slash scareyoutosleep50 and use code scareyoutosleep50 to get 50% off. That's code SCAREYOUTOSLEEP50 at factormeals.com. 
As many Scary to Sleep fans know, I've been going through a lot of changes in my life. And one thing I've been doing is getting my finances much more organized, and that includes paring down some of the subscriptions I pay for. It feels like everything is a subscription these days, be it for the gym or streaming services or music, the list goes on and on. And something that has helped me tremendously is rocket money. They not only helped me cancel subscriptions that were a pain to try to do myself. Have you ever tried to deal with some of these companies directly? It's just a headache. Rocket Money also alerts me when the subscriptions I did keep go up in price, giving me the ability to weigh my options and keep those little extras that add up oh so quickly in check. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills. I can see all of my subscriptions in one place, and if I see something I don't want, I can cancel it with a tap. I never have to get on the phone with customer service. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year with over 500 million in canceled subscriptions. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash scare you to sleep. That's rocketmoney.com slash scare you to sleep. Rocketmoney.com slash scare you to sleep. Like a punch to the gut, it came to me that I may never make her smile again. I was caught in a stampede of dread, but I had to know for sure. I moved closer to her, my shoes leaving prints on the carpet, and I sat down at her feet. I felt my eyes start to burn before I touched her. I knew what was going to happen. I stretched my trembling arm toward her thigh and allowed my hand to hover for a moment. The fatigue I felt this morning had melted away and was replaced with a deep sadness as I dropped my hand. That horrible, confusing, foggy aura followed it down through her thigh and onto the mattress. I tried again and again to touch her, but it was useless. I closed my burning eyes and began to weep. What happened? Was I dead? I was heartbroken and bitter and lost, and I needed Olivia to help me through this. But I would never have her again. I would never touch her or make her smile or eat dinner with her again. Knowing that was my reality created a vast emptiness inside of me. A darkness that was all-encompassing. I could feel myself start slipping into it, like falling into a pool of ink. Thick and viscous. My entire world was slipping away all at once, and suddenly I was no longer sitting at Olivia's feet. I was on my back, slowly sinking into the darkness, drowning in the pool of ink, in the emptiness. It wasn't drowning in the way you would imagine. It was more like falling or floating, like falling in slow motion into nothingness. There were no sounds, or tastes, or smells. My senses all worked, there was just nothing to sense. What was happening? Was I dreaming? Was this purgatory? Was this hell? I couldn't bring myself to care. No one I knew or loved could see or hear me. I'd never hold Olivia again. I was ready for the blackness to swallow me. That was the first time I heard it. Marcus. The voice almost whispered. It was hollow and echoed, like what you would hear when you shout down a tunnel. 
It seemed to come from all around me. Marcus. Are you fulfilled? The voice continued. What? Who are you? What's happening to me? I asked the voice in the dark. The voice repeated. No, I'm not fulfilled. I want to go home. What the fuck is this? My fear was giving way and becoming more like animosity. Was this voice responsible for how I ended up in this void? This is only what you will allow it to be. What you will allow me to be. It felt like I was being taunted by some spiritual afterlife wizard who insisted on speaking only in riddles. The pool of blackness was pulling me in deeper, and I started to feel like if I didn't play along, I may be swallowed whole. I didn't know what was at the bottom of this nothingness. But I knew it led to nothing but sorrow, pain, suffering, and anguish. Okay, I don't know what you mean. I told you I'm unfulfilled. What do you want from me? I ask the hollow voice. I want nothing more than what you're willing to give. The compensation I require is only what brings you peace. Uh, Olivia! I almost shout. Olivia brings me peace. I can't be fulfilled without her, and she needs me too. I force myself to stop talking as I hear my voice beginning to quiver. I don't know what's going on, so I cannot allow myself to look weak or fearful. Fear Fear not, my my boy, boy. the voice responds. Apparently, I didn't stop talking soon enough. I I possess possess the the ability ability to send send you you back back to to your your dearest, dearest Olivia. My My only only request is that you continue your life with her the way you have been. The whispering phantom's voice was still all around me. His tone gave me some strange sense of comfort, almost. It seemed to be keeping me from sinking into the never-ending abyss below. Not only was it completely surrounding me, It seemed to almost be inside my head, like it was a part of me, and I, of it. Please, I begged the voice, please send me back to her. I will do anything. It seemed almost too easy. All I had to do was continue living my blissful life with the woman I deeply loved. I wanted to pry. I wanted to ask the voice why I was being given this opportunity. I was scared, however, that if I did, I would lose this chance. I don't know what I did to deserve this, and I didn't want this voice to ponder that idea either. My My boy. boy. You You need need not not beg. beg. This This offer offer is only only extended to those souls whom truly deserve deserve to be Earthside. I've seen seen into into your soul, soul, boy. You You are are me. And I, you. I wasn't sinking anymore. The darkness that was once pulling me down didn't seemed to have such a strong hold of me. 
Instead, I was being lifted up, back through it. The voice continued, guiding me back through the nothingness. As it spoke, my chest began to burn a little. I will rescue you from this darkness, Marcus, as you have rescued others from theirs. This is my gift to you. I don't know how this voice knew anything about me. Anything about how I had found myself in the right place at the right time a few times in my life. About how I was fortunate enough to keep a few people safe in their time of need. To rescue them, as the voice called it. My chest was burning more now. Are you... Are you God? I asked needing to know how he knew these things about me. I never believed in God. I've never given him a reason to save me. Who could this life-giving phantom be? I am no God, my boy. I am only what you will allow me to be. As he responded in his whispering tone, I started flying through the thick pool of darkness towards the surface. The voice was gone, and instead replaced with a sort of humming, a buzz of sound rapidly increasing in volume all around me. The burning sensation in my chest had evolved into a full-on fire. My entire body screamed in pain as I was snatched out of whatever void tried to consume me, I clenched my eyes shut, and through my eyelids, I could start to see light. All of my senses were alive. The inferno in my chest had spread to every muscle and tendon in my body, and the buzz of sound around me was now an intense roar. Then... Nothing. I sat up and gasped for air. Coughing and retching, I leaned over and felt the earth beneath me. The raging fire inside me was gone. The roar replaced with the sounds of the outdoors. Where was I? The world around me was coming into focus, and I was able to make sense of my surroundings. I was sitting at the far end of my property. It really was a beautiful piece of land. This particular area was my personal oasis. Overhanging trees provided nature's privacy. The ground covered in moss, soft and damp. It was always so easy to dig down into the earth. Whenever someone decided they no longer required my assistance to keep them safe, I knew my little oasis could help. I couldn't imagine a more beautiful place to spend an eternity. I couldn't imagine becoming one with the earth anywhere else. What a gift I had provided to the few women who abandoned the safety I provided. I ran my hands through the moss below me before getting to my feet. Was I back? Would I be able to hold my dearest Olivia again? To bask in her perfect smile? I started to run through my oasis and back towards my home, a new sense of purpose filling my soul as I closed in on the house. Everything was as I left it. My car in the driveway with its door left open due to my initial panic, the front door unlocked. I made my way up the stairs, calling out for Olivia. Olivia, I'm here. Can you hear me? I called out as I turned towards the bedroom. And there she was. Awake now. I knew she could hear me. I rushed towards her, bursting with excitement as I realized I would be able to hold her again. She was caught off guard by my erratic entrance and 
pulled away from me at first. I reached the bed where she was sitting up and threw my arms around her. You have no idea how good it feels to hold you. I thought we'd lost each other. I ran my hand down her face, near tears. Don't fucking touch me. She spit. Her words sliced through me. But I knew she didn't mean it. I knew how much she loved me for keeping her safe. I knew, in time, I could make her as happy as she made me. I realized I was sitting on the chain holding her left wrist to the bed frame. Oh, I'm sorry, my love. Did I hurt you? You'll never believe what happened to me. I tell her as I turn my body towards her. I drape my legs over hers and put her hands in my lap. You don't need to be scared, Olivia. I'm back and I'll keep you safe. A tear fell from one of her eyes and rolled down her pink cheeks. I hated to see her sad. Don't cry, I said as I gently wiped it away. You know how much I love you smiling instead. With that, I put both my index fingers in her mouth and pulled her lips upward. Thanks for listening, and thank you, Serena Nix, for sending in the story, Devil of the Dark. If you'd like a story um, uh, read on the show, played on the show, (laughs) produced for the show by me, if you'd like it to be considered to be produced on the show, send it to scareyoutosleep at gmail.com for it to be considered. No guarantees, but... And also, again, I am still very backed up with um, submissions, but that's a good thing. It's okay. Just... When you send it in, just know you may it may require a little patience. Um, so yeah, uh, we're coming upon the winter holidays. It was finally kind of chilly here in LA. It's been pretty um, global warmy, if that's not a real term, but it's definitely been a pretty warm, <laughs> warm December so far. Um, we're only three days in though, so I have hopes that it's going to chill out a little bit. Despite what most people think, it is not always 70 degrees and sunny year-round in California, in Southern California. We actually get some cold days. They wouldn't be considered very cold to a lot of you, but they are cold to me. So, um, what was I going to... Oh, so, uh, I don't have a lot of news. Um, the show I know has been a little... Maybe it hasn't seemed to you, but it's been a little um, off kilter a little bit. Not the show itself, but just, you know, releases and release times and things like that. Um, Working through, again, a lot of behind the scenes stuff. And uh, this is some personal news, but I am getting some help for some mental health things I've been going through. So hopefully soon because of, um, you know, God's gift to humanity, uh, medication and therapy. Uh, then I will be a little bit more uh, stable with my uploads and things and doing some more bonus stuff. Um, So yeah, I'm not going to get into it because, you know, it's just personal. But um, I've been struggling a lot this last year, especially the last few months, and I finally reached out and got some help. And I am very, very excited to start on this mental health journey. Um, So yeah. I'm sure lots of you out there can relate, and yeah, I don't know what else to say about that. (laughs) Um, So yeah, I thank you so much for all of you who tagged me in your Spotify wrapped. Um, I think on Twitter I called it unwrapped. I apologize. I'm 
not very hip, even though I worked for Spotify for over a year. <laughs> um, but thank you so much for tagging me. It meant a whole lot. And like I said, I've been struggling a little bit lately, a little bit a lot lately with some mental health stuff. So that honestly, you have no idea how much that picked me up and turned me back around. It was literally the day before that I had been getting some pretty nasty things um, said on social media. They weren't terrible. It wasn't, I wasn't getting like death threats or anything, but just some kind of mean things said on different social medias. I'm not going to direct you to where or whom, um, but uh, I was talking to a friend about it and I was like, I just, part of being a creator in these days is social media and sometimes I I don't know if I can do it there were times honestly like I said the day before the raps came out I was talking to a friend and I was like I don't know if I can do this anymore especially the social media thing I just really don't know if I can I'm I'm very <laughs> mentally ill at the moment and um, I'm very sensitive and these people are just not these people like everybody it's just it is it's a very small subset of people um, who will just say, you'd be surprised. Um, some people, whenever you get into a creative space, I think you become kind of inhuman to some people. I'm just like a robot who has podcasts, who has a podcast or that, you know, puts out stuff. And sometimes people just say the most sideways shit to me. <laughs> Literally, uh, they will just, um, and speaking of like mental health, I have had people write to me and try to diagnose me from like, you know, and it, it's really bizarre. It's, it's been, it's been a journey for someone like me who has not, before all of this started, I was not very big into social media. I, I would do little bits of Instagram, little bits of Twitter, but I wasn't like immersed. And so this has been a learning curve for me to just get random DMs about, I'm not, you know what? I'm not even going to get into it because the moral of the story, not the moral, but the very next day is when the raps came out and then I got tagged. I don't even know how many times across all of the platforms, the big platforms, especially Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. I, I don't even know how many times I was tagged. It was so many. I'm tremendously grateful to all of you who have stuck with me through all of these weird transitions and all of this stuff. You, I mean, you literally from a day where I was like ready to hang up my microphone or at least step away from social media to the next day being greeted with so much love and appreciation and warmth and kindness and it was it was like a an immediate prayer was answered you know it was it was incredible um so thank you so much I don't open up that much on here so sorry if this was all TMI um, I'm in a weird place right now. We, you know, a lot of us <laughs> probably are, I'm sure. Again, a lot of you can relate to that. Um, okay, I'm going to go back into being a little more mysterious. This was my TMI episode, um, but I just needed, I felt like I needed to tell you all of that backstory to let you know how much it mean, meant to me to hear all of that about your raps. And also, me aside, just to show you that, you know, and I know a lot of you know this, but these people who create your favorite YouTube channels, your favorite podcasts, you know, your favorite blogs, your favorite um, Twitch streamers, tell them how much you care about them throughout the year, you know? It, wrapped only comes around once a year, and, you know, people like Twitch streamers and YouTubers, they don't get wrapped, you know? So, or, that, that was a weird phrase. God, social media is weird. Um, it's caused us to speak so weirdly. Anyway, um... <laughs> But let them know. Let them know. Go out and tweet at them. Email them. Leave them a comment. Go to their chat. Tell them how much you care about them. How much they mean to you. How much, you know, how much you appreciate them. It seriously can literally change someone so exponentially. Like, I did a whole, like, a, a 180 flip um, from one day to another. Because I really saw how much love is out there and how much I need to keep doing this show. <laughs> so, um, thank you so much. I love you all. Uh, if you want, oh, baking, I made, and I can't pronounce it. 
it's German. It's a German cake. Uh, it's an apple cake. I it's Apfelkuchen. That was probably so bad. I apologize to anyone out there who speaks German, who is laughing at me right now. Um, it was great. I love cakes that use yeast as a leavener um, because I feel like it cuts the sweetness and it gives it depth of flavor. And you know that if you were following the Scare You to Eat group on Facebook, and this is my awkward trans- transition into speaking of social media, you can follow the show at Scare You to Sleep on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and YouTube. Um, so yeah, go follow the show on all those. I'm not going anywhere. Don't worry. Um, and I believe that's it. Thank you so much again. Thank you so much so much. Now, go get some sleep. Sweet dreams.